citizens, it's that time you're officially in the Alert Zone. Welcome to the Alert Zone TV. I'm the Wizard Uncle James. I would love for you to become an active citizen of the Alert Zone, and you guys and girls already know how to do that. If you're 18 years of age or older and are able to be legally armed here in America, practice your Second Amendment rights. From wherever you're watching around the world, if you are able to be legally armed with a firearm, get you one or some. If not, whatever you're able to be legally armed with, arm yourselves, people. So, I just wanted to tackle this subject because this has been a hot topic issue as of late. And I thought I'd kind of go into an explanation of where this come from. And, you know, being in now that I'm 45 and, you know, in the black community, for those of you who don't know, once you make it to a certain age, you know, you uh, make uncle status. So that's why I adopted the word or uh, the name Unc. You know, we you earn it. I earned the name Unc. So, you know, the younger studs call us Unc uh, when they come and chop it up us about certain things. So, But I was alive and I didn't fully understand it, but I did. And as I got older, I just read on it and things like that. To understand the very first assault weapons ban and the modern day assault weapons ban. And I wanted to talk about that. The 94 assault weapons ban, what led to it, and now the modern assault weapons ban and why it seems to be two different things. So let me just get into that. So <clears throat> this is my AK-47. Clear for YouTube, safe control environment, all that stuff. Um, as you guys can see, I got the tags on it. I just recently got it back before I went on vacation last month. Uh, this is was an original Russian AK-47. Uh, I told you guys, if you don't know, go and see my video of my AK-47, and you'll know what what happened to it. Um, it's kind of a hybrid now. I had to get some parts from PSA um, to make it fit and make it work. Um, I still have the other rest of the furniture, but uh, nevertheless, this is my AK-47 chambered in 762 by 39. And this is my AB-10. AK, my old school Tech 9, chambered in 9mm. Um, the only difference between this and the actual Tech 9 is the barrel. It's the exact same gun. With the AB 10, they had to shorten the barrel up uh, because they said the original Tech 9 looked very menacing. And the look of it, if you lived back in the 80s and early 90s, you know, pulling out a Tech 9, guys and girls will literally crap their pants at just the sight of the uh, firearm. That's why they had uh, Intratech, a company that does not exist anymore, uh, change this up, and then they just wind up shutting down. Now, we do know one thing about these particular firearms. And the one thing we know about these particular firearms is they are made dead junk. Uh, the thing about the Tech 9 was if you got you one that was working and it didn't jam on you, you was probably one of the baddest things in the damn country. Forget on the street. Uh, these things were known to jam, but uh, I did a video on that. That's another. But nevertheless, so the AK and the Tech 9 style, as they used to call them back, machine pistol style. Pistols hit the streets in the 80s um, during the crack epidemic. So me being born in 79, when I came of age, I remember crack. You know, um, crack was the drug that brought untold wealth to people that was in the drug game. And what I mean by that is guys... That was petty criminals got into the crack trade and if they did right with their money, I mean, some of them overnight would go from maybe five or ten bucks in their pocket to thousands. 
And, you know, crack was a drug that made a lot of black millionaires in the underworld. Um, so, you know, all your biggest cocaine slash crack dealers, you know, those guys had untold, unlimited un wealth. But crack was the drug that gave people money that it was so easy for everybody to make money that guys started turning on each other. And that's when the streets started getting flooded with these and these. Um, for those of you who don't know, in the 80s, The AK-47 became more popular on the streets of America. For, by the time the 90s hit, for those of you who was living back then, you know the whole country was wild. It was wild. I mean, the amounts of killings, the streets across the country were literal war zones. I'm not kidding. Well, with... Weapons like the AK-47 and the Tech-9, we'll just call it, being two weapons that were part of the daily life. Good old Joe Biden got together with some of his other buddies and they took the pain of Moms, dads, and families that lost loved ones in the drug trade, uh, that lost loved ones with these types of weapons, and they marched them out there on national TV across the country and used their pain to get everybody talk about the 94 crime bill, but what a lot of people forgot was the assault weapons ban happened in 94. The very first assault weapons ban in modern time. And it wasn't a lifetime ban, but it was a ban. And what that did was it bailed the main it it it, it um I'm sorry. It uh banned the manufacturing of these types of weapons what was already in circulation could be sold you was grandfathered in so you didn't have to worry about that they didn't ban the possession as the saying if you had one we was coming to confiscate it if you didn't turn it in they just banned the uh the manufacturing of them and that got in during a crazy time so you have to understand Politicians are masters at using your pain to work against you. Sometimes, as a victim, you may not see things with a clear mind. When a person loses their son or daughter, or their house is shot up with one of these, and innocent lives are taught, took, here in America, we automatically blame the firearm. We don't blame the people that's behind them. Well, because the 90s was so wild and things were so chaotic, the public overwhelmingly supported the 94 crime bill. Another thing they used to get these uh, get uh, banned was the Vow Wow Act. For those of you who don't know, Vow Wow means Violence Against Women Act. That was also instituted in the 1994 crime bill. So we're thinking about three strikes, but they was able to get a lot of things through under three strikes and because weapons like this were used in domestic violence situations and in this country and in this world when we hear domestic violence we automatically in our minds picture a man abusing a woman here in america let me just say this there's more Domestic violence and lesbian relationships than there are in heterosexual relationships. That's a fact. I'm not making it up. You guys can go to YouTube or TikTok or you can go online and read the FBI and the local cops websites and things and then it'll tell you that. 
Uh, you even have women that are lesbians that say yes. The amount of abuse we take from other women is way worse than men. Uh, the worst might happen is an argument, but I digress. They used a lot of different things to get this through. But mainly, the crack wars was what brought on the first assault weapons ban. And because crack basically was shown and was an American epidemic, but black people were the face of it, so it was easy to get things like that passed. The reason the very first, well, the 94 assault weapons ban wind up expiring is after the smoke cleared and life went back to normal, people seemed to downsize to the assault weapon ban. And so Bush Jr. let it expire. And that's how we got rid of the nationwide ban. Now... This is Mikel Tech PLR 16. Empty. Chambered in 223-556. This is a somewhat like an AR variant style firearm. I didn't feel like getting my AR out of the safe. To be honest with y'all. And this style firearm has given rise to the statewide assault weapons ban because we can't get anything nationally. Now, why this particular weapon and the modern day assault weapon ban? Well, after the first assault weapon ban ended, the rise of school shootings, Columbine happened in 98. Columbine wasn't the first shooting, but it was the shooting that changed things in modern times for school. Columbine happened. Then after the assault weapons ban expired, these school shootings, these grocery store shootings, these uh, library, these church shootings, these spree shootings, as I like to call them, these modern day spree massacres, went just haywire. And usually it was with a 223 style AR style type weapon. Uh, Sandy Hook, I can go down the list of different places where the AR 15 <clears throat> became the enemy of the state. With that being said, the AR variant of pistol, the 5.56223 pistol slash rifle. The rise of that has made things more difficult to have a nationwide ban because from my research, correct me if I'm wrong, the AR is the American version of the AK-47. It's kind of like an answer to the AK-47. That's why there's so many ARs in America. Is this, Amer is this American as apple pie? But nevertheless... These type of weapons. This one was used in the 94. And this type is being used now in the different states. Anytime there's a mass shooting, they go after the AR and say that this particular pistol, for those who can't get a full band, they're now targeting AR-15s as the catalyst. So, if you don't own an AR and you're able to be legally armed, get you one. Or get you some if you have the money and you have the desire. Get you some. Get you wide some while you can get them. Just in case there's a ban and you can't find any for a while. Because when there's a ban... And they stop producing them, the price go up. Because they become more and more scarce. And that's until the ban is lifted. Because the majority of the bans that I see out here ban the sales of them. They can't outright ban the possession of them. Because basically they're already in circulation. You know, Illinois tried with the whole 
register them or we're going to come get them or whatever they was doing over there. And, you know, a lot of law enforcement said that they wasn't coming to confiscate nothing because it was unconstitutional. And eventually, maybe if Donald Trump win and we lean on him enough, he can get that retracted. But I just wanted to talk about the quote unquote assault weapon bans. And I want the younger generation or people that was around then that didn't understand firearms to understand how these kind of regulations are usually used to get through. If they can't play a racial angle, they'll play a tragic angle to get these kinds of things passed. And as I said, this particular firearm and this one was the face of the crack epidemic. This is the face of the modern day spree shooter. So you guys can figure out where I went with that one. So I just wanted to talk to everybody about that. And just give y'all some insight to how these quote unquote assault rifles bans happen. Now I know somebody may come in and say, oh, it's not an assault rifle. And this is just for the sake of the conversation about these styles of weapons. What America want to label them as. You need to know so you can keep up and stay ahead of the curve. That's why we do what we do here. So hit me in the comment section. Let me know if you own any ARs or AK uh, type weapons. Um, do you enjoy them? And if you're somebody who's thinking about getting one of these, <laughs> or these AR, AK style firearms, get you one and get you some. Can't go wrong. Just think about this. The men and women walking around carrying these, wearing camouflage, protecting the country is why you're able to enjoy your freedom. You having this accessible to you where you can put somebody down will help you enjoy your safety. Hit me in the comment section. Let me know what you think about these assault weapons bans. Till next time, stay safe, stay on, stay on high, high alert.